it only takes minutes for the baby to lose a, a substantial life-threatening amount of blood. When seconds count, the tiniest of patients are depending on O-negative blood donors to save their life. A baby's born and delivered and in trouble and needs blood. We don't have the luxury of waiting. It might mean life or death in minutes. We're taking you inside the NICU where babies weighing only a few ounces are fighting to survive. Nearly every one of them will have transfusions. Just by nature of, of us trying to keep them healthy and to survive. Incredible real life stories. We are not going to save this baby unless we have blood. You're watching this baby come back to life basically. That's about as proud as you can be. It's one of the best feelings in the world. A call to action to O-negative blood donors and the power they have to save babies. As someone who takes care of babies at the bedside, we need it, we need you. It's real and it's life-saving. Real life scenarios of saving the lives of premature babies. Hello everyone, I'm Susan Forbes and welcome to the Share Your Power podcast. And I'm Pat Michaels. We have an eye-opening show about the vital role O-negative blood donors hold in saving the lives of high-risk babies. You know, O-negative blood is in the highest demand because of its universal ability to save patients with any blood type, but only 7% of the population has O-negative blood. And of those O-negative donors, only a very specific portion of them can give blood to premature babies and other high-risk pediatric patients. Now, in just a moment, we're gonna have an interview I did with a doctor who specializes in treating premature babies, and he's gonna explain why very specific O-negative donors are a lifeline for babies. And we're also going to take you behind the scenes at One Blood to explain how these special donations are identified. But first up, it's gonna be Dr. Andrew Herman. He is the Vice President and Chief Medical Officer at Atrium Health Levine Children's Hospital and Jeff Gordon Children's Center in North Carolina. He is also on the One Blood Board of Directors. Dr. Herman is an Associate Professor of Neonatology and has been with Atrium Health in Charlotte, North Carolina for nearly 20 years. And Dr. Herman, thank you so much for joining us today. I know we have a fascinating conversation ahead of us here, so thank you for being here. Thank you, Susan. I'm thrilled to be here. I want to get right into it with you and talk to you about why is O-negative blood so important uh, in your line of work? The unique thing about O-negative, and we want to have O-negative available at all times, is O-negative blood, um, the fact that it's O means it doesn't have certain proteins on the, on the red blood cell. So it doesn't have these proteins on the blood cell that would, would have the baby react to the blood. So it's a universal donor blood. So the O negative can be given essentially to, to almost anybody in an emergency situation. We don't have the ability to check labs in a, in a brand new newborn who was just born. So if we have an emergency situation where they need blood, we have to give, we have to give it right away without necessarily testing if it's gonna be um, reacted to or not. Regardless of the baby's blood type, if the baby is A positive or B negative, you still want O negative. Uh, that's, that's the blood type that is, is needed to help save these, these patients' lives. Correct. We don't know what the baby's blood type is going to be when they're born. Uh, and we don't have the time to, a lot of times in an emergency, we don't have the time to be able to rely on the labs coming back to tell us. And so the O negative is there it's reliable. Um, and so in an emergency where we need to save that baby's life right then and there because they need volume and they need blood because they've lost it somehow. Um, and we wanna be able to reach across the room into that cooler and grab that negative blood and give it, save that baby's life. And so that's why it's so important because it's the universal donor. Any baby can get it. Um, as safely as possible. There's a couple things to, to keep in mind when a baby's being delivered. A lot of things can happen where they can actually lose blood um, before they're born or during the labor, the labor process. So the placenta, which, which helps keep them alive, can bleed, they can lose, they can train, they can have a, a um, an auto transfusion into the mom, so it can come out very anemic um, and very sick in need of emergency blood. And it, time is of the essence, right? I mean, the seconds count here. Seconds do count. It might mean life or death in minutes. In an event where a baby were to lose a significant amount of blood and need a transfusion in the delivery room, anything that, that delays time puts that baby at risk 
um, and we're talking about risk of, of a lifetime. Um, and so we wanna be able to be able to act instantly. And that's why it's so important to have it available in the blood bank for 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 all cases, and then and then for high risk cases to have it available oftentimes in the room if we anticipate the possibility of needing it. And what would be a high risk case? There are times when a, a pregnant mom um, is in a car accident, and uh, there's concern that the placenta uh, has has abrupted or started to pull away from the uterus. If that placenta starts to come up, come off of the of the uterus, uh, it can cause a lot of bleeding, as you can imagine, because there's two separate blood supplies, mom and baby. Babies don't have a lot of blood in their system compared to you and me as as grownups. Um, so a, a term baby, let's say a baby is you know three kilograms. Um, the rough estimate is that baby, you know, most babies that you that you think about being born will have about 300 milliliters of blood. That's 10 ounces. So you can imagine any bit of bleeding before birth from a placenta from a placental abruption or something like that. Um, it only takes minutes for the baby to lose a, a substantial life-threatening amount of blood. So it's so it's so important to have it available. Ten ounces. I mean, that's the, that's all the blood that is in this tiny little baby. And when they go get a blood transfusion, it's very different than if I needed a blood transfusion, right? Because I'm a grown up. I'm going to get a, a much larger volume unit of blood than than a baby would. So when it's time for a transfusion for a baby like that. How, how much are you giving to them? So a couple things. So, you know, the bigger we are, the more blood we have in our system. So one, we have more reserve. Um, and so our babies don't have a lot of reserve. So again, to, to um, punctuate the point that, that O negative is so needed because in that delivery room, there's not much reserve. There's not much there. I take care of babies that are, <laughs> that are all the way down to about 10 ounces. A baby who's about let's say 400 grams at birth, which is a little over 10 ounces, um, their total blood volume is about at max two ounces. A transfusion for that baby would be somewhere in the teaspoon amount uh, at a time. We don't just give a unit like you do typically in older kids or adults. Pat, I find that so amazing that just a teaspoon of blood can mean the difference between life or death for yeah. a baby. Susan, it really is. And often these preemies need more than one transfusion. And that is exactly what Dr. Herman talked about. And he explained how they can make it possible to give a baby blood from the same donor each time. A lot of times what we'll do, knowing that they're likely to need multiple transfusions, we'll, we'll, we'll get something called a PD pack. Which is, which is essentially a single donor of fresh blood and will separate it into you know, various transfusion aliquots so that we can give the same donor. So we're not giving this premature baby who's gonna need multiple transfusions, multiple donors blood. So we try to keep it, keep it limited. Now you have this one blood donor is going to have a, a opportunity really to help save a baby's life four times over possibly if not more that's absolutely right you know you think about i kind of think of it as you know someone who's someone who's struggling to swim and, and someone keeps saving them when they're coming up to the top of the water it's, it's like that um so their blood their blood count drops and then we save them and your blood count drops and then that person that person who donated is is saving them just like you said multiple times over people always hear us talking about the need for o negative blood you know if there's a if there's a blood shortage or if there's a situation a trauma or whatever it may be it's that's that o negative that people are reaching for the doctors and nurses are reaching for yet seven only seven percent of the population has o negative blood yet it is in the highest demand because of its universal ability of being able to save all patients really at the end of the day so it, you touched on it a minute ago about that every day these premature babies and babies are are getting blood transfusions how how common is it throughout the day 
we do try to be very judicious with the, the transfusions that we give um, and only give them when they're absolutely necessary. But when they're necessary, they're necessary. And, and we don't hesitate when, when we know that it will, will improve a baby's um, condition clinically. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly not uncommon. And, and I would say it's a daily occurrence, um, not for every baby, but for many of the babies in NICUs around the country. Now let's pause on our interview with Dr. Herman here again for just a moment, because you know, Pat, at the beginning of the show, we talked about the need for very specific O-negative donors to help these premature babies. Yeah, Susan, that's because O-negative blood used for babies needs to be free of a very common virus that most of us have been exposed to. Absolutely. and. You shouldn't worry though, because yep. that virus usually doesn't cause a problem for most people. But Dr. Herman's about to tell us why that virus is very dangerous for babies and blood just being O negative is not enough. We talked about it needing to be O negative, but it also needs to be what is known as CMV negative. Can you speak to that and explain to people what that stands for and why it's so important that it not only be O negative, but CMV negative? Yeah, CMV is called cytomegalovirus. And it's a very common virus that most of us have had exposure to throughout our lives. And for most of us, it doesn't really cause much of a problem. Um, babies who have not been exposed to cytomegalovirus um, don't have the ability to mount a very good response to it. Cytomegalovirus can kind of hide in the blood in the bloodstream. Um, so if we're giving a transfusion to a baby and we know that CMV can hide in the bloodstream, we know it's very common in the population. We're going to give a transfusion to a baby who won't necessarily do very well with a CMV infection. Uh, we want to make sure that that blood supply is tested and negative for CMV. Um, so it's, it's incredibly important. So, so for those donors who are CMV negative, um, it's even more important to donate because we'll probably, a lot of that blood supply will be designated for newborns. Now that shrinks down the donor population even further, right? 7% of the population has O negative, but the majority or a larger portion of the population has the CMV you know, is CMV positive. You can have this virus, never even know it. So we're looking for that special person to donate, um, you know, O negative and, and CMV negative, donate um, often. And so that's a special person that can save a lot of lives. You know, Pat, people listening right now may be wondering how O negative donations that are also CMV negative are identified. Mm -hmm. Well, one blood test all O negative blood donations to see if they are positive or negative for CMV. And we specifically do that testing so we can identify blood donations that can be used to help babies. But there's a catch here. More than half of the population has been exposed to CMV. Now, think about the fact that only 7% of the population is O negative. Take away about half that, and that's how many O negative donors are also CMV negative. And that really starts to decrease the number of blood donors who are eligible to donate to babies in need. And that's why it's so important for O negative donors who are CMV negative to donate as often as possible. Blood is so life-saving, and Dr. Herman talks about when a baby needs a blood transfusion, it can mean the difference between life and death. You can have the most talented doctor like you, Dr. Herman, and that you sit there and you're saving these people's lives, but if you need blood and it's not there, there's, there's no substitute. That's correct. There are, there are times when it's blood that's, what's, that's required to save a life. It's real and it's life-saving. There's no other way to say that, you know, as someone who takes care of babies at the bedside. We need it. We need you. Now, you have seen some incredible scenarios where blood has saved very quickly right before your eyes. And if you could uh, share the story you shared with me not too long ago um, of of a situation that took place with a, with a newborn there. I recall a, a situation. Um, several years ago where there was a, a baby who um, was having a, a bedside procedure. And during that bedside procedure, 
um, it became apparent we the, the baby ended up getting very you know very sick very quickly dropping dropping their heart rate and 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 starting to go into a code situation so a code blue situation which means cpr and it became fairly apparent that um very likely that procedure had had resulted in a in um uh some damage to the lung and some bleeding acute bleeding and it was a very, very tiny preemie. And I was at the bedside and knew instantly, we are not going to save this baby unless we have blood. So I said to the nurse, um, I need you to run downstairs to the blood bank and get me blood immediately. And she did. She, she ran out of the room, ran down to blood bank, grabbed blood, came up within a syringe. We gave it. And that baby turned around instantly and went home and did well. We were in the right place at the right time, thinking the right things, and we had the right stuff. We had the right treatment, which at that point was the blood that that baby needed. When you're standing there and you're watching, one minute you're watching a, a, this baby in a code blue situation where, you know, it could potentially not make it, and and then you know exactly what this baby needs to be able to survive in its blood. And right before your eyes, what is it like to see that? A, you're watching this baby come back to life, basically. There's nothing that uh, is as invigorating or as scary as a code situation, when, especially when you're the one who is responsible for that person's life. And to be able to identify the problem, and in this case, blood loss was the problem, that was gonna be the fix, and, and blood was gonna be the fix. To identify that problem quickly to the point where you can resuscitate them without, without any adverse outcome of the code, that's about as proud as you can be. Um, and it's one of the best feelings in the world um, to be able to, to have that degree of, of focus and, and clarity and, and, and then speed of diagnosis and then have, this, the, have the, the thing you need right, right away and there. I'll also share with you my own experience and one of the reasons why I'm so serious about um, about one blood is, you know, I had my own trauma several years ago. I had a, a bicycle accident and I broke five ribs in three places, each rib. So 15 rib fractures. And after losing, I think it was about five or six liters total. I needed transfusions in order to save my life. Um, and it was not lost on me that there's someone out there that um, helped save my life, who doesn't know who I am, and doesn't realize that they helped my family. They helped me help save other lives. You know, the children we're talking about, the babies we're talking about. If I wasn't here, that wouldn't be possible. In an instant, you know, the doctor becomes the patient, right? And you're just going out for a bike ride. And the next thing you know, you're fighting for your life. And that's what we try to explain to people. You think, oh, I'll never need a blood transfusion. It just simply isn't the case. One in three will need a blood transfusion at some point in their life. And, you know, this is, you're, you're a living example of it, just going about your day on a bike ride and bam, in an instant, life changes. It could be any of us for so many different things that could happen in the blink of an eye. Um, and you end up in the emergency room and on the receiving end of a blood transfusion. The blood banking um, industry and, and, and through that, the donors that, that donate their blood, it's, um, it's about everyone taking care of each other. It's about taking care of your neighbor, um, who in turn will take care of you and your family by donating. Um, and it's... You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. 
I think, you know, O negative donors realize the important role they play in the world, but I don't know if they realize just how specifically important they are, you know, when it comes to these to babies and trauma and cancer patients. And, you know, we're depending on such a small percentage of the population to save so many people. Um, and making blood donation a habit is why we keep saying that, you know, come back every time you're eligible because there's always, always a need for blood. It's so inspiring to think that um, people that donate blood, you may not be thinking about it when you're donating, but you, you, what you're doing may save someone's life who you don't even know. And even more than that, in the, in the neonatal population, we're saving it, it, its hope. And it's the future of this little person who, let's say it's someone who needed that O negative in the delivery room. If we have that available and we can give it and it's life saving and that and that baby thrives, they're going to be able to, you know, have holidays and, and go to school and play and, and then become a family themselves someday. And you may, as the donor, you may not know who that patient is. But it's powerful to know that they're out there. Yeah. Right. And be proud that that you may you probably did save somebody's life or make someone's life better. I think, you know, by hearing from you, uh, people can have a better picture of exactly what goes on there but with the tiniest of patients, giving them the chance to live at the very start of their life. So uh, I appreciate you joining us and telling us all this. I just want to thank you, Susan, for the opportunity to hopefully motivate people, uh, give a little education, um, and hopefully more people will come out and, um, and we can save more and more lives. It's so fascinating to hear from Dr. Herman and just how life-saving O negative blood is for these tiny patients. But there's another side to the story, and that is making sure these very specific O negative donors are identified and on hand for babies. And for that part of the story, we are going behind the scenes at One Blood. All blood donations will end up in our biologics facility for processing. And it's the biologics team that is at the helm of identifying the donations that are O negative and CMV negative for pediatric patients. I talked to One Blood's biologic manager, Katie Ann McIntosh, and she walked us through how these donations are discovered and how quickly they're on their way to hospitals to help babies. So we receive the donations from our donors division. We receive it in and our team will proceed to process in that donation. When we scan that donation to process, we can see that that donation is an O neg and that we also receive a message if it is eligible for pediatric use. If we see that it is eligible for pediatric use, we can select yes, we would like to use it for pediatric use. And that gives our system an automatic flag that says we will then request a CMV testing on that donation. So what's the reason you'd have to request CMV testing? You know, why would you have to retest these donors? So we want to ensure that CMV testing is done on this donation because we would be using it for a pediatric use. And even though it come, the donation is coming from a known donor, previously donated um, donor, then we still want to ensure that we test for CMV to ensure that in between the time of their donation that um, they did not become positive for CMV. So once you get the results back from the testing lab and it says that it's CMV negative, uh, so it's good to go, so what's next? So once we receive back the results that this donation is good to go, everything is clear and the CMV results are in and the CMV is negative, we then proceed to the filtration of that red cell. So what are you filtering? So in that case, we are filtering any white blood cells that are in that red cell product. So by the time it's done filtering, these are packed red blood cells, right? Yes, when it is done filtering, it is packed red cells, they're LUCA reduced, which means there are no white blood cells, um, and then we also have our CMV negative product. We will then proceed to get that donation labeled, and we will proceed to provide it to our distribution team for uh, shipments to our hospitals. The turnaround for use for the pediatric red cell is very fast. So your team has to be alerted at all times, not only to pay close attention to the blood supply they're handling, 
but they also have to be monitoring what's coming up on the screens to identify, hey, this is a pediatric patient. I need to do X, Y, and Z with this because uh, this is different from regular uh, blood supply. We also set in place measures where we keep our specialized products isolated or place, place them in labeled um, bins where we know exactly this donation is for pediatric use uh, and we prioritize those um, when we're coming in on a daily basis. Once we've labeled that donation and we provide it to our distribution department, the distribution department waits for an order from one of our hospitals and once they receive a hospital order for a pediatric RBC, then they will pack that pediatric RBC within a shipping container, they will get that with a courier and off to the hospital. Those RBCs Kadian was referring to are red blood cells, and the process she was describing takes place around the clock. It is so important to note also that all first-time O negative blood donors are tested to determine their CMV status. This way, when they return for a future donation, we know if their donation could potentially be eligible to help a baby. Now, so many moving parts to ensure a safe and ready blood supply for the tiniest of patients. And it also drives home how important it is to donate blood as often as you're eligible, especially if you're O negative. You know, O negative donors really hold a special power to save so many lives. So to all those O negative donors out there, we appreciate you and we encourage you to please make blood donation a habit and donate each time you are eligible. That's going to do it for this episode of Share Your Power podcast. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.